Hi, today we are going to learn about antenatal examination. So these are the prerequisites that you are going to ensure before you start your examination. Greet the patient, tell her that you are going to examine her, take a verbal consent and as you can see there is adequate lighting. We have put a screen so that there is privacy of the patient, we have to maintain that. Patient should be in dorsal position with flexed knees and uh, she, you should make her lie down after she has passed urine. So we stand to the right side of the patient for uh, examination and uh, we tell the patient herself to lift her uh, clothes. So here we put the Adequate exposure is very important while still covering the patient. So first of all, uh, we start with inspection. So in inspection, you will look at the uterine contour, uterine ovoid, whether it is longitudinal or transverse. Then you will comment on the umbilicus. If the umbilicus is inverted or reverted, then you will see if there are any stria gravidarum present, is the linea nigra present. Then you will comment on any scar marks. Is it a transfer scar? Is it a midline vertical scar? And how has it healed? Then you will look at uh, look for any visible pulsations or any uh, dilated veins and if the hernia sites are free or not. As we can see all the quadrants uh, that the abdomen is moving uh, with respiration. So this ends our inspection. Then while coming, uh, next step is palpation. So in palpation, first of all, you have to warm your hands. You have to be very gentle in your uh, palpation throughout. And all the palpation is done with the palmar surfaces of your hands. As soon as I'm touching the patient, I can note the local temperature and I can see if the local temperature is raised or if it is normal. Then of all, we will correct the dextral rotation if it is present. So if the dextral rotation is there, you will correct it gently. Then we come to fundal height. So fundal height, how is it seen? With the ulna border of our hand, we start right from the ziffy sternum and we go downwards and the first resistance that is felt, once your uh, dextral rotation is, has been corrected, the first resistance that, has, that is felt, that is the fundal height of the patient. So in this patient, the fundal height is 34 weeks. So mark this point with a pen. We will measure the symphysial fundal height. So as you know, we have already seen the fundal height is over here and the other fixed pu symphysis pubis, which is here. So we measure it from pubis symphysis. <coughs> measure it from pubis symphysis up to the marked point and then we rotate and see. So in this patient, the pubis uh, symphysis fundal height is 32 cm. Similarly, we measure abdominal girth, which is measured at the level of uh, umbilicus. It is measured in inches and to avoid any bias, you should keep the centimeter side uh, facing towards yourself. Now we come to the obstetric grip. So the first three grips are done facing the patient. So in the fundal grip, you will face, uh, you will put your the palmar surface of your hand over the fundal area and you will try to see which part is present in this area. So if you feel, if no pole is felt over here, that means that it's a transverse line. But if you feel a pole, so if it is a soft, broad, irregular part is felt, then that is suggestive of breach. If a hard, globular, smooth, bilateral structure is felt, then that is suggestive of head, which means breach presentation. So in this case, it is a soft, broad, irregular part is felt, so it is suggestive, suggestive of breach. Then we come to lateral or the umbilical grips. So with one hand, we will stabilize one side, and with the other hand, we will try to feel which parts are present. So in this case, I can feel small knob-like irregular structures. So that is suggestive of limbs. Similarly, I will stabilize this side with one hand and then feel with my other hand. So I can feel a continuous curved smooth resistance over here. So, so this is suggestive of back. Now coming on to the third grip which is pollux grip. Pollux grip, uh, keep your hand like this, stabilize your hand with the ulnar border at symphysis pubis and then you will try to feel what is being felt between the thumb and four fingers. 
So if you feel a uh, hard globular structure which can which is blottable, which is hard, that confirms that this is a cephalic presentation. So this is suggestive of head. And also if it is blottable, that means the head is not engaged. The fourth one is pelvic grip or the fourth uh, Leopold maneuver, which is done uh, facing the patient's feet. So you will use again both your hands, palmar surface of both your hands, you will go downwards parallel to the inguinal ligament and backwards and you will approximate your fingers. So if the head is not engaged, you will be able to approximate your fingers. On the other hand, if the fingers are not uh, ring and you are not able to approximate your fingers, that means the head is getting engaged now. So the next thing is to look for, to auscultate for fetal heart sounds and for that you need either a stethoscope or you can use a fetal dog tone as well to localize the fetal heart sounds. So in typically in a cephalic presentation and when the patient is, uh, if the position of the head is occipital anterior, the fetal heart sounds are felt in the middle of spinal umbilical line. So if the back is towards the right side, the, uh, that, is, that is the area where they will be heard most distinctly. If the position is occipital posterior, then the fetal heart sounds are heard even more laterally, almost in the flanks. If the presentation is breech, then mostly the fetal heart sounds are heard in the periumbilical area. And in transverse lie, again, you will have to localize where the back is and somewhere around the umbilicus or above the umbilicus, you will hear the fetal heart sounds.